Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to today's major markets update for Friday, November the 15th. We remain bullish, except for the semiconductors, we whisper quietly, and maybe also the small caps. But otherwise, we continue to remain bullish and we view this pullback as still another buying opportunity. But as we said already on Tuesday, risk is rising and for sure today's market behavior showed that the risk is increasing that we are moving towards a larger top and allow me to explain that in great detail where you can see that that fourth fifth wave setup we were looking for failed miserably today but there is still a very good setup for the market to reach that 60 60 level it remains on my radar for the s p 500 as well as 2150 Things are getting extremely oversold real quick already um, under the hood and behind the scene. So we might actually gear up for another decent swing trade buying opportunity. However, we will also cover if the socks are indeed the proverbial canary in the coal mine. Now, I'm not a bird watcher. I don't know if that's a canary, but this is what my AI came up with. <laughs> and it looks all very rosy, but it could mean that the SOX is gearing up for a crash. So we are setting up a crash alert. We're not there yet. There seems to be a few more swings up and down to go before we get there. But I think you already know what we are alluding to, and that is that leading diagonal first wave. And then we get a second wave, and then a third of a third wave, potentially a third of a C wave. And those are nothing to um, sniff at as the market most likely just experienced a C wave by itself today as well, which most likely is not yet entirely done, but getting awfully close to a bottom. Remember, we tracked the Elliott wave and the Elliott wave is a um, probability game. And once a certain probability or possibility is excluded, another one opens up, it's fractal. Right? It keeps on subdividing itself, but we believe we are in the final stages of this fifth wave. We are somewhere here. So we still need a larger fifth wave, and I'll show you that in a minute. Also, we believe the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are in ending diagonals. They're extremely tricky because they're ABCs. And um, today definitely showed you how that um, can resolve itself with... Um, more downside than expected. Indeed, we were looking for a little bit lower to that 38.2% retrace for the wave four, ideally, and we definitely got a whole lot lower. So please bear with me as we are navigating our way through a ending diagonal. And it is similar, but on a larger degree compared to the beginning of this year. Remember after an ABC, we can always tag on another ABC lower and then another ABC higher. That's the problem with ending diagonals until we start making really lower lows. So we'll go over that also in a moment. So indeed, we're now really in this realm of 70% reliability. That's unfortunate nature, but I don't make the market. I don't make it into an ending diagonal. The market does for whatever reason. And uh, last but not least, we, we're not going to blend politics into the markets. Politics uh, at most give knee-jerk reactions, like we just saw the Trump trade, which essentially has been completely uh, negated now, but baked into the market, okay? Whatever th that sense, um, certainty Trump um, election has given the market is now baked in. And again, I think we would have had the same reaction if uh, Kamala Harris was um, um, elected because it gives also certainty. And whichever certainty you like, whichever candidate you like, that, that's up to you to decide. I think you know my point of view. If you look at my Twitter feeds and what I like and what I post, but that's besides the point. What we're here for is trying to understand the market and where it's in. And currently we believe it is in a ending diagonal. And I still think we need another larger fifth wave to go, potentially a C wave of the third wave to that 6060 uh, for the S&P 500 and 21500 for the NASDAQ 100. It's quite odd for the market to not really get there. And remember, gains need to make up uh, for losses, so keep your losses small. And there are many ways for you to uh, get help from me. Uh, please uh, use that to your advantage. Um, that also means, for example, cryptos are ripping and the markets are uh, dipping. 
be also in cryptos. Gold has been ripping uh, all year for almost two years. So if you're not in gold and silver and the miners, you're missing out. Um, as I told my uh, premium Bitcoin and Ethereum members, so to say, that while Ethereum was down 30%, gold was up 30%. So why be in Ethereum? It, it's a waste of resources. It's a waste of money. Money needs to make money. So be in gold while Ethereum is doing nothing and then move around and be in Ethereum when gold does nothing. That's the true nature of um, investing and trading and in um and making sure your, your money is always working for you. Otherwise, it's lost opportunity and, and lost time. So with that behind us, please uh, have a look at all the charts I'm going to share. It's a lot. So this is the uh, original NASDAQ count we were tracking with a last final fifth wave up to about 19,500. That would have been picture perfect. All we got was three waves. This is not a fourth wave anymore. It's way too deep. And as you can see, we're almost at the previous all-time high. So it could just be a simple retest of the all-time high before we move higher. However, it is now most likely that this wave three topped already in another ABC. Welcome to ending diagonals. All ABCs taped together. It's quite sloppy. We believe the market is going to bottom pretty soon. As you can see, we're getting quite oversold on the daily RSI 5. And every single time that happened, at least in this bull uh, for this year, so to say, we got a pretty decent good reaction out of it. I believe if this is indeed a fourth wave, that we does see a retracement for the, the Nasdaq to about 19,000, 19,100, and then a C wave lower to the ideal wave four target zone before we get the wave five. Okay. And the wave five should then target 19,500 to about 20,500. So that is where we are at. As you can see, again, we fell uh, through warning levels and all that stuff that I can share with you on the NASDAQ 100 hourly chart, for example, which is here. This is what I shared with you yesterday, okay? This looked good for a 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, and a 4 setup. Ideally, we would have gone to about, as I said, 20,683, 20,076, somewhere in this tiger zone, right? Target zone would have been ideal. Well, we broke well below it. Yes, at the open today, we closed right at the 38.2. So the market could have responded and rallied higher. It did not, okay? And if you decided to go long, you should have been stopped out once we broke below 20,600. So if you... Um, went long at about the open 20,679. You only had 79 or 80 points of a uh, downside loss risk. That's minimal. So yeah, I took the trade and a little bit of loss and then I reversed the trade and I had some gains. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's how it works for me. So again, no fourth wave. This is not a fourth wave. It cannot be. So then the question is, did I count this here correctly? The beginning, the one twos and the one twos. Well, we can count it slightly different. And then we have actually five waves up. One, two, one, two, one, two. Compare that with what we have here. Okay, one, two. And then I placed the second wave here as some sort of, yeah, I would say running flat for this wave two. But if we're objective, we say, well, we made a higher high and a higher low. So let's then make it a one, two, one, two. And then we get to five waves. Five waves can be A or indeed the completion of this larger um, third wave. Again, the NASDAQ doesn't count well as five waves up. That's fine. It shows you that each and every index needs to be treated uh, by its own. We still have, in my humble opinion, three waves lower from the all-time high, A, B, C, and then three waves back up, A, B, C, and then this is a C wave, okay, of a massive expanded flat. Just shows you how ex expanded flats can be. Now, we see here, of course, massive gap, okay, that to me should get filled at, at the minimum gap, okay? This gap should get filled even on a bounce. Um, the market doesn't like to, to leave a gap at, at this size here. Okay, so maybe a little bit lower, that is fine. And there, th this is a massive gap. So that's where we expect at least a, a bounce to materialize too. Now, you can see here how extended this C wave is getting. The 361.8% extension has almost been reached, okay? Which is at about 20,300. Again, I'm talking about the NASDAQ 100. The 400% extension is right at 20,200, which gets us very close to the 76.4% retrace of this rally, which is quite common for a B wave, even for a second wave. 
So nothing out of the ordinary. Now let's have a look here at the hourly RSI 5. These are conditions, not trade triggers, massively oversold. Massively oversold. Okay, so vertical line here, if we look at how uh, we move this one here, and here we had, of course, nice positive divergence, right? Right here, we had nice positive, no, not that one, stupid stock charts. This one, we had nice positive divergence, okay? That was really easy um, signal. So now we should expect positive divergence here as well. It doesn't have to be. But look how oversold also the money flow is becoming, as you can see here, very oversold, right? Like there, very oversold. MACD also very oversold. So at least we should expect, in my humble opinion, a gap back that up to about 20,850. But if we reach the 76.4% retrace and we do a normal CSA relationship, where do we get? 21,490. Back again to the 20, 21,500 level that remains still on the chart. Okay, so how does this then make for a ending diagonal? Well, as I said, ending diagonals are all ABCs. As I've shared with you before, this yesterday's also show why I'm kind of stepping away from using the hourly chart because, in my humble opinion, it um, is easier to make mistakes with so many candles versus um, a daily chart. So on the daily time frame, we'll then have A, B, and then this C wave. Okay, see that? If the C wave goes a little bit lower to the 20,200 C, we still get to 21,509 is, I believe, the ideal uh, extension, but somewhere around there. So that matches really great. Okay, so this is still possible. Again, showing you merely the possibilities. Again, we're getting quite oversold. Not extremely oversold, but quite oversold. Okay. And again, normally the third wave in an ending diagonal reaches 123.6. Then the fourth wave go to 61.8, sometimes 76.4 only. And then we get a nice five is one relationship, okay, to that 22,475 level. So even bigger picture wise, ideally it appears that we're still missing uh, this red wave five. So again, this could still be also already wave four, the larger wave four. It should bottom at around 19,950 to 20,320, getting awfully close already. Again, we're getting oversold, okay? Oversold to conditions, not a trade trigger. Also here, you see um, how we failed miserably to get to the 21,500 target. That's a little odd, okay? It's odd to me, but if it is, it is. Even here, a CSA targets 21,504. So we might be subdividing. Okay, and that's what I showed you here. So A, B, A, B, C. It's all A, B, Cs, similar to what we had here earlier this year. And especially the S&P 500 has uh, that as a great example, which I will share with you in a moment. So we've broken below this first warning level, 21,200. We've broken below the second warning level at uh, 20,600, not yet below the third one. Okay. However, again, as I showed you on the hourly chart, yes, we broke below the third warning level. This is the hourly chart at 20,600. And of course, the final warning level is at 19,876, the low made here in early November, late October. Okay. So that's the two options I'm sharing with you. I'm still missing this last fifth wave. This is too awkwardly short to make it all of this red wave five of black wave five. It's possible, but it requires, again, a, a break below much lower prices, I would say, the September low. So this is then the S&P 500 analog to the uh, NASDAQ 100. This is what I shared with you yesterday, that we should reach the 59.50, 59.14 level. We broke right below it at the morning, okay, at the open. So that was not a good sign. So this is not the way forward anymore. It's too deep. I, I don't see this as a way forward. It's way out of proportion. So how can we then still get to 60,060, okay? Again, when one door closes, the fourth wave, another one opens, okay? The market always keeps its options open. And we should then be in this C wave targeting um, the about 2.764 to 3.0% extension at about 58.50, 58.30. Okay, now you see the typical B wave target zone here. And uh, if we bottom at about 58.20, which is awfully close to the 
six, uh, three, four hundred percent extension, somewhere around there, three hundred percent extension. Then a 0 0.764 extension gets us to sixty sixty, similar to the Nasdaq one hundred. Also here, extremely oversold, just as we were late October, kind of when we were a little bit early mid of a mid or middle or <laughs> of October. <laughs> uh, money flow extremely oversold, MACD extremely oversold. Okay, those are all conditions. Those are not trade triggers. But if we get the positive conf divergence confirmed as outlined for a potential on the chart, that'd be really great. So the alternative is that we have indeed topped for this C wave of the third wave. Missed the 60-60 level, a little bit by too much in my humble opinion. And we're getting quite close to being oversold. So I wouldn't be surprised to see turnaround Tuesday honestly would not be surprised however money flow is still negative it's been negative ever since the beginning of this month so money flow did not confirm at all the trump trade not at all but i've pointed that one out uh, before that was one of the war warning signs right that were ringing and we've broken out below the second warning level okay so this could be indeed the fourth wave okay this could be the fourth wave for this ending diagonal and um, yeah let me share the February March rally here. All ABCs. So we topped here for a three, a four, and then we had one, two, three, four, five. And wave three was AB, ABC. Okay, wave four, ABC, and also wave five was AB, ABC. So again, when we did ABC up, this could have been wave three. This blue wave A could have been wave three. No, it decided to add on another ABC, right? So then it got here similar to the top here this orange wave a could have been this red wave three well it got awfully close but now it decided to subdivide one more time okay so that's what i mean with this subdivision can always tag on an outer abc once we have an abc up it doesn't mean that the third wave or the fifth wave is complete it can just be wave a of c and that might be very possible right now okay so that would then make uh, this wave count look like this um, in accordance with the hourly chart. So this is then A, this is then B, underway, maybe to again about that uh, 58, 20 level, somewhere around there, right? And then we're going to do a C wave, okay? So we're going to do a C wave, somewhere around there. And the C wave doesn't have to be equal to A, it can be shorter than A as well. Let's see what kind of extensions would get us pretty nicely uh, to the ideal target zone. Okay, so let's say we get a nice 61.8% uh, retrace at that 58 to 20 level. Okay, and what kind of Fibonacci extension gets us to 60, 60, somewhere around there. Okay, well, that appears to be about a 76.4%, just as I showed you on the hourly chart. Okay, so I'm going to reverse this one because, of course, Stock charge doesn't have 76.4. Yes, we have 23.6, but why should you then have 76.4? Right? That would make no sense to have that. <laughs> Just kidding. So there we go. And we add that. And let's see here that 76.4 Rala gets us right there. Okay. C is 7.764 times A. Now you probably wonder why do I still use stock charts? Huh. Well, yeah, good question. Uh, so many charts. It's ridiculous that I don't want to um, flip. So can we then also get a different um, C wave extension for in green, all right? The, the one degree larger C wave. Yes, there you go. That would then also be a 76.4% um, extension. Okay, let me see if I can grab that one there. So we make that one green. You see that? So this is green. So this is the entire length of wave a. Now we're just going to measure from 23.6, which is of course the inverse of 76.4 from a 0 to 1 perspective, and we're going to add that to the B wave. Et voilà. Et voilà. Yes, I, je parle français. Um, this is then C is 0.764 times A. Again, doesn't have to be exactly 1, can be 0.618, can be extended kind of market decides. So this would not surprise me at all if this is going to happen, my dear friends. Okay, this would um, really confuse most. And that would then be wave three. 
Okay. And we, again, we're getting quite oversold pretty soon. One or two more days of downside wouldn't surprise me. Uh, then we get also very oversold, of course, on the chain of money flow, and then uh, also oversold on many uh, market breadth indicators. So this one doesn't suggest that's why we remain bullish, that the top is not in place. Even if it is a fourth wave, we're still missing a fifth wave. So we remain bullish, okay? Um, again, this is our um, comparison, the February-March ending diagonal with this ABCs continuously being uh, taped onto it, so to say, and it could happen one more time. Okay, we could tape on another ABC. Market decides if it wants to do so. And it wouldn't be surprised because we're getting quite oversold. Uh, alternatively, as I showed you, we're just going to get a, um, a bounce and then a rally. But the bounce is pointing higher and the rally is pointing higher. So once again, it seems like the risk reward is now towards higher prices with minimum downside risk. Uh, from current levels, about 50 points on the S&P 500. And that would make for almost 200 points to the upside and 50 points to the downside. 50 points risk, 200 points potential reward, right? I cannot guarantee anything. And the same is, of course, here for the, uh, the NASDAQ 100. We have ideally about um, 100, 200 points downside risk. And we have from current levels about um, a thousand points upside reward. You do the math, okay? Given where these indicators are, I'm not going to bet on too much downside anymore. That is my preferred view. And maybe I'm completely wrong. I'll be wrong completely below the late October, early November lows. All right. So that's what we got here. Let's close this one. The fourth wave did not materialize. I apologize. It looked good. It didn't. And we're extending lower. 5820 would be really ideal. It doesn't have to get there, but it would be really ideal. Then we get this nice C is 0.764 times A. 0.764 times A. Wow. Wonderful. Amazing how that can line up. If not, then I expect a bottom in the 5810 to 5726. And from there, the fifth wave higher to 6250, potentially a little bit higher, depending on how much this fifth wave extends. But that I don't have any information over. Okay. So um, to be determined. Dow Jones can have topped for this wave three and a four and a five, but it has not declined as much. And honestly, so far, the decline looks really like a uh, ABC, if anything else. Okay, so this is then the length of A. This is um, Tuesdays through Wednesdays decline. There we go. And now we are getting awfully close already to the next target zone. And yes, it can, of course, become five waves lower, okay? That I don't know just yet. It could become five waves lower. So this is the target zone we're looking for uh, from a bounce and then potentially um, lower again for this potential wave four. Also here, again, it would require another leg higher, okay? So if broken below the second warning level, not even close to the third warning level. The alternative is that we have indeed top for five is five, blah, blah, blah. However, money flow ramped up tremendously. So that's quite interesting. So this whole negative divergence has been um, erased and liquidity drive markets. So, hmm, interesting. Okay. So interesting means we can still subdivide further. Welcome to the taped on ABCs and one, two, threes. Okay. Um, also here, look at how extremely oversold the chain of money flow is. Okay. Um, let's see here how extremely oversold. Okay. It is isn't so oversold. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. So to say from a comparison perspective, I haven't seen it this low in a long time. Look how far back I have to go. So it starts to appear that um, downside is uh, uh, maybe smaller than the upside reward at this stage. But price is the final arbiter. Those are all conditions, not triggers, as we have technically enough waves in place for this wave. Five or five or five or five or five, yada, yada, yada. Again, the weekly chart has increasing money flow. Interesting, huh? So then this is our proverbial canary in the coal mine. Okay, this is the semiconductors. And we so far bottomed exactly in the ideal wave uh, C of th slash three target zone for this orange wave uh, C of gray wave C slash three. Question mark, are we going to get a four and five as shown? If we do that, then we have a leading diagonal A1 
on our hands. And after A1, again, we'll get uh, B2 retracement. Okay, we'll get a B2 retracement. And uh, let's see how much of a retracement we can expect. Let's say somewhere around there, that, something like this. We get a B2 retracement. And then, of course, we get a C wave lower. Okay, and the C wave lower will target, um, depending, of course, on FIP extensions, anywhere into the 4045 level to um, 3800 level, right? That's well below the April and August low, okay? That, my dear friends, is something to look forward to if you are a bear or want to profit from downside. So this potential is now in the chart, okay? It is in the chart. The warning levels for the bears can now be lowered, which is a good sign, okay? I'll keep um, these ones here. I'll put this one there. So, so we now have made three waves lower. Okay, as you can see, the price section is extremely uh, discombobulated since August. This does not look as healthy as the other indexes. All right, the other indexes are all the way up here in 6,000. Right, and what, where's, where's this one trading in, in a um, relative perspective? Right, if the semiconductors were the Dow Jones, it was trading at 6,000 plus. Now we're here at 4,800. Oopsies. Okay, it seems like the whole semiconductor uh, AI dream is over, um, as always, um, over-promise and under-deliver. Uh, AI is great, of course. It's a very helpful tool, but it will not solve all the world's problems. The only one who can solve the world's problems are us humans who create those problems. Anyways, this looks bearish to me. Okay, it does not look healthy. Bigger picture-wise, I believe we've topped for this cycle three, and we're going to go to a cycle four, anywhere between 2,000 and 3,200, potentially as low as 1,000. Oopsies, but not there yet, not in a long shot. Okay, we've just broken below the first warning level for the bulls. Second one is at about 3,300 on a um, monthly time frame. But the daily time frame here does not look healthy. We're below the 200-day, we're right at the Ichimoki cloud, so I'm not going to give the bulls here much wiggle room other than expecting this um, leading diagonal to fill in. All right, Contingent on, of course, a lot of variables. But this is, at this stage, to me, the, the most likely interpretation. Um, also, we can have a expanding leading diagonal, by the way. And then this, this C wave or third wave lower um, is going to be quite more extreme expect much lower prices okay to be determined so stay with me um unless you trade the etf trade alerts which actually went into uh, inverse etfs on the short term um, this is still very tricky territory but we got the breakdown so so far so good i like it all right I, on to the iwm could it have topped here for this five of b Mo uh, most likely i wouldn't say but Probably, it sure looks that way. I cannot yet tell you if that's the case. We need to break below much lower prices. I almost want to lower this all the way to the August low uh, to confirm. You know what? I'm going to do it. There you go. And this is our third warning level. I'm going to put it there. I really want to make sure we give ourselves plenty of wiggle room. And this one is the... F so we've broken below the first one. Why? We've now moved out of the target. So um, I think this is a l gives us a little bit more wiggle room from that sense, I'm not saying you should hold or anything. This is a, a bearish looking week so far. Very uh, bearish reversal up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, down, down, down. However, we've just bottomed here, right here at the ideal wave A target zone, the orange warning level ahead on the chart. So I'm keeping it. It shows you that we've placed those strategically for a reason. Well, this orange one was, of course, this B wave high at about 228, 228. So we expect to bounce soon. We're getting oversold. And then another leg lower for this four and then a five that would complete three on a potentially also expanding ending diagonal. All right. And then a massive four and a massive five to be determined. But this seems quite reasonable. Getting quite oversold as well. And you can see every single time this index gets overbought, <laughs> that's it. But you also can see is the frustration uh, here where normally it should have reached 245 as you can see, 245.37, 245.41 overlap uh, with each other because that's the green 161.8% extension, and it is the red 
138.2 percent extension. Well, we didn't get even close, and and that's that's really the hallmark of a ending diagonal that is or a, and a bull market that is a little struggling a bit. Um, so please bear with me. This is would be a really nice. Don't really understand why we didn't really get there, but it is what it is. It also still feels like we were missing at least a four or five. So all we got was three waves up. Uh, three waves up, hallmark of a ending diagonal. All right, how we're we doing on market breath? We've covered all the indexes. And again, I can't say yet a massive top is in place. Seems like we're lacking at least one more larger fifth wave. And that, that uh, bigger degree fourth wave could either be on the way or it will be uh, postponed if we get another C wave lower next, uh, higher next week. And I showed you how elegantly the uh, S&P 500 could reach 6060 from about 5820 with a 0.764 C wave extension on two degrees. So this is the bullish percent index for the NASDAQ and it has not confirmed the top. Instead, it has been rising with price. This is the dotted green line. It also is now higher than the July high which is also positive. We want to see negative divergences to tell us a larger top is in place. So this one still suggests higher prices. So it's not the can all do all, but it suggests it. However, the <laughs> bullish percentage for the S&P 500 has negative divergence. So that one is not too happy looking. And it really shows the weakness of the rally that we had as the Trump trade. Okay, so this one's negative, not looking good. So one for one. Hmm? A D line, not looking good. No, it's not, because we have negative divergence now on a multi-week basis. That's not good, and it really um, was one of the major components of the warning signs are ringing um, thesis I had since uh, Tuesday. Okay, so the current decline would fit for a larger uh, drop, the red wave four. But as I also showed you, maybe this is just going to uh, carry over into December and January. We get a much, much larger correction to really foretell that we are topping out. But for now, this matches the current price action. New lows. Yeah, uh, it's high for the NASDAQ. Um, nothing too crazy for the S&P 500 or actually the NYC. So this is also one for one. How about the McLellan oscillator minus 41? Well, as you can see with massive negative divergence, but it is never really a good indicator for a market top, just as extreme bullishness is never really a good indicator for a massive top. It is most of the time extreme bearishness and extreme low readings um, that are much more confident uh, um, indicators of a bottom. So we're reaching uh, quickly again to the ideal Bottom zone below minus 60. Wouldn't surprise me if we get there by Tuesday to be determined. But for now, it also suggests we're getting closer to a viable bottom than a low, but we haven't seen any reversals yet. The last one from late October worked elegantly. However, the semi, um, not the semiconductors, the summation index is still on a sell. We did not get a buy signal. It also means that the summation index is now getting um, close to oversold once again that would tell us that a trade uh, for the upside could materialize. Potential positive divergence developing. And this is our ebb and flow indicator. Eh? If we really have been ebbing for a long time, we need to start flooding. If we really have been flooding for a long time, right here, we need to start ebbing, okay? Um, it's not a can all do all indicator. It has its flaws like everything else. Sometimes we have negative divergence. Um, meaning that we have uh, increasing price and negative summation index and the market just keeps on trotting higher. So for now, um, it starts to look like we need at some point flood to materialize. Short-term indicator dropped to a tentative sell with today's red candle. Nothing too crazy, but it is a sell. Sentiment, active money managers are 92, nothing crazy, overexposed, okay? This is kind of normal, slightly above the long-term average. AAII yesterday was at 50%. It is high, but again, I don't think it's a reliable top indicator, but it is high, okay? Too many people, too, too bullish. A bearishness was yeah, low, but nothing too crazy. Fear greed indicator went from greed um, to neutral within a day. Okay, we were at 60 and about uh, 62 last week, 66 a month ago. So 
neutral, has some room to grow. But other than that, these ones are kind of in the middle, just like the active money managers are um, somewhere in the middle. I want to see fear, uh, of course, especially extreme fear to know that we're much closer to a bottom than to a top. So overall, once again, even for the NASDAQ, I'm still missing a larger fifth wave, higher, okay? That would match better with the edit wave channel we're in. We can still get a B wave higher for the NASDAQ 100 for a subdividing wave three, and then a four, then a five. If this indeed is all of wave three, we should bottom somewhere around 20,000, somewhere around there, and then a fifth wave higher. Similar for the S&P 500, ideally bottom around 58.20. And then we get some nice um, setup for C is 0 0.764 times A extensions to reach that 60-60 level would be ideal. If not, we'll probably bottom at about 57.25 and then we move higher. Then we have completely erased this entire Trump rally. All right, that's no, nothing too weird. Uh, we haven't even broken below the October low nor the September low. So still missing this fifth wave, all right? Uh, same for the Dow Jones, getting closer to bottom, it appears. Can still do his fourth wave into the low 40,000s and then a fifth wave into the mid-45,000s. 50, mid but please be aware that from a bigger picture perspective, we can count enough waves up. But just because we can't count enough waves up doesn't mean the market is done because we haven't even broken below last week's low. Semiconductors are indeed the proverbial canary in the cold mine setting up for a much larger decline if we can get this leading diagonal A1, all right? This is the least certain index. It's been very whippy and it is trending lower. Ever since October, it's trending lower. So it doesn't look too great to me. Bigger picture, I still suggest a larger top is in place. IWM can have put in a larger top. Um, it did fail to reach some of the ideal target zones. Also here, uh, all the... Potential one, two, three, four, fives morphs into morphed into one, two, threes. Can be in a larger expanding ending diagonal, currently still in this ending diagonal, uh, with potentially a bounce soon back to about 237 and a half and then lower uh, to about I would say 225 before we can move higher, with of course the potential for a much larger top. But nothing has been decided yet. We need to drop much, much lower to really confirm the much larger top is in place. And then market breath has some mixed signals. Some are not diverging at all, others are. So um, we do have, of course, the AD line diverging. And I think that's a, that's a more important one for the longer term. But divergence is a condition, not a trigger, can always be erased. So we'll have to see when the next rally materializes what the AD line is going to do. All right, that's all I have for this week and for today. I hope you appreciate this long, detailed, uh, multi-layered analysis. Uh, that uh, shows you what goes into um, the markets to make uh, a good assessment on what to expect next. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to help. I covered a lot, and it's not easy. Uh, this is one of the most difficult things you can do in your lifetime, trying to figure out the stock market and trade it correctly. If you can do the first one, it's great, but then trading it correctly, it's a whole other level. Take care, trade safe, and I'll catch you all next week.